and the teams have come out. They have reached the sidelines, and we're just moments away, Ron, from the start of the second round. Why don't you go ahead and tell us about tonight's Modern Care Medical Isolated Player of the Game. We're going to pick on a kid. <laughs> we're going to a really an outstanding football player on both sides of the ball. Number 34. Jackie Dupree and I have, back. And and I special teams as guru. guru. Not only that, I have uh, I put him in the in the Butcher Name Hall of Fame, and I, I apologize. I've called him Jakari all all I guess since he was in the seventh or eighth grade. Jakari, I apologize to you and your family. And he's lined up out here on the sideline, uh, fixing to go down here. We're fixing to kick this one off. Ron, I got one question for you. What time is it? It is showtime. Showtime at Claude Manners. Jesus Torres set to kick off for Malvern. Gets the kick away. Going to be fielded at the 14-yard line. Up across the 20. Tackle made as the return man gets to the 25-yard line. Uh, Christian Denton, number 86, came down with the ball and uh, is going to start the Tigers just inside their 30-yard line, looks like. I'm going to tell you, we'll mention one thing real quick. We've talked all year about the the outstanding national anthem delivery wow. here at Malvern. <laughs> it so far surpasses anywhere else we go. I want to mention tonight, Shakira Smith. Uh, actually, I believe got a standing ovation <laughs> from the crowd with a just a, a heartwarming rendition of our national anthem. I want to thank her for a beautiful, beautiful performance. Miss Kilmer, the, with the, that, that vocal group, they do an outstanding job. Here we go. Pretty groove at the line of scrimmage. Flags come down before the start of the play. Looks like we may have had some movement along the line. It is a false start against Prairie Grove. We're going to back them up to the 20-yard line. That first play, they wanted to go wide, right, wide, right. That's uh, my understanding. They're pretty much a right-handed football team. So our left defensive end out there, and starting out there, big old number 54, Devin Kirk. And uh, Devin's just done a great job out there on that left end. Of course, he's got, he's got big old number 50 right there beside him. That's good company having Trey Broughton with you. Cooper Winters, the quarterback for Prairie Grove, comes to the line. Two receiver split right. It's a give, fake, or give off the right side. Gain up to the 24-yard line. So they get about four yards back off the penalty. It'll bring up second down in 11. Justin James in there with the uh, interior line. Of course, Broughton was in there on the bottom of that one. And big old Mason Morgan, the junior, the big 240, 240-pound, 50-pound uh, junior uh, defensive tackle. I told him I'm going to call him. The Tigers come back to line of scrimmage. Send a man in motion near side. Winners give near side. Wow. Hit tackle made in the backfield. Well, I'll tell you what, that time right there, Mike, Trey Broughton just absolutely whipped the guard right in front of him, and he was in the backfield before they actually made the uh, the, the handoff, and uh, they're going to give him, what, a half a yard? Yeah, yeah. half a yard. Still third down and 11. Broughton was all over him. Big third down play here for the Leopards. We're going to see if this bunch wants to put the ball in the, on the air. Twins right, twins left as Winters works out of shotgun now. Leopard showing blitz, bringing a man off the edge. Throw up the middle, incomplete. Wow. Leopard with good coverage out there. Quante Walker in the area. Yeah, Quante Walker wanted that ball and uh, uh, badly underthrown ball. Of the, once again, front four of the Leopards really had some heat on the quarterback. And uh, Leopards do what Coach Fogelman wants them to do, respectfully what Coach Scarborough wants to get a three and out. And that is the quarterback setting up as the punter. Always dangerous there. Cooper Winters will set up deep. He is back foot's about the 13-yard line. Leopards showing blitz. They back off. Winters gets the kick away. Going to be fielded at the 45. Fair catch called for there by Marcel Bedford. And the Leopards will start at their own 45-yard line with their first offensive series. Yeah, that was a work really well, Clyde. When you get a three and out and force a punt and uh, start at your own 45-yard uh, line, excellent field position for the Leopards. And uh, get this offense out here and uh, see what the Leopards can do against this uh, 
Jerry Grove defense. Javante Jones split to the far side. Bryson Barnes split to the near side. Three backs in the backfield. Along with the quarterback, it's going to be a give. Up the middle, big run right off, right out of the gate. Justin James gets to a 45 of Perry Grove. Yeah, that's good to really see. They've got James back there to the tailback. they got Ja'Carri, uh, an ice little player out there beside him. A little different look for the Leopards, and uh, these are, they, they just, Fogelman does an excellent job of uh, getting the ball in, in, in playmakers' hands. So a little different look here with uh, an ISO player out there on, 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 uh, as a flanker. Warford alone in the backfield now. Twist eye to side, brings Dupree in motion, fakes the give. Warford on the keeper, he loses the football. And they got it. And it looks like Craig Rose is going to come up with it at about their own 44 yard line. Yeah, that's one of the things, one of the things that Coach Fogelman really talked about that you can't do. You can't turn the ball over. Looked like he never had really had a good hold on it, but uh, these are things that the Leopards have not done, Mike. We have not turned the ball over, and uh, well, the defense is all fired up. They want the ball back, so. Very uh, Rose comes the line of scrimmage. Winters setting up under center. Two backs in the backfield. Bring a man in motion to the far side. They're going to take a timeout. Looks like there was some confusion uh, in the Prairie Road backfield. We're going to take a break as well. No score here. 10 one to go in the first quarter. You're listening to Malvern Leopard Football. For 40 years, people have been coming to Western Sizzling for one thing. Our flame kiss steaks. Slow cooked. Flame kissed from the top and seared from the bottom to lock in the flavor. Topped off with our famous gold dust seasoning. It's what makes the difference. Flame Kissed, the definition of great steaks. Gotta get to Western Sizzling. Yeah. Uh, I like wearing it at Sykes because I get to help people. Uh, helping people is uh, a big part of, of what, I, what I'm about, what I like to do. I like working at Sykes because it's a good learning environment and everybody is just wonderful. They work with you, everybody's nice, it's just a good place to work. We'll see you at Sykes. Back at Claude Mann Stadium, no score, 10 one to go in the first period. Uh, Prairie Grove just got the ball on a fumble. Well, I tell you what I do like, Mike. I like the enthusiasm, and that it's a cold weather. And like I said, I like the enthusiasm of the defense, and uh, they're wanting out there. They're wanting to hit somebody and play hard. Prairie Grove comes to the line of scrimmage. Three backs in the backfield. Bring a man in motion to the near side. Winters takes a snap, pitch far side. Good game for Prairie Grove as they're going to get to midfield. Pick up of six, almost seven yards on the play. So that's Bartholomew, number 20. We're going to have to watch him. He's a junior linebacker, running back. Not very tall, about 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five, 160 pounds, but he's a, he's a speedster, and uh, we need to keep an eye on him. Second down four for the Tigers as they come to the line of scrimmage. Two backs in the backfield. Winters turns, gives to his big fullback. He's got a first down and more. He's free in the secondary. Leopards giving chase, and Javante Jones makes a saving tackle at the 20. They'll spot him just inside the Malvern 20 yard line. Well, we had a, had a linebacker take a fake, and uh, they did an excellent job to open it up between the defensive end and the defensive tackle, and there wasn't a linebacker there, and uh, nice run, nice gain for the Tigers. teams, well, Malvin only had the ball, one offensive play, but both teams have found some success on the ground so far early. Well, we expect to watch uh, Prairie Grove to tie, try to take advantage of, of Malvin's aggression and speed. Winners turns, gives. Give up the middle. Gain to about the 16-yard line. On the carry for Prairie Grove. Once again, number 20, it was... Uh, Weston Bartholomew, the uh, junior tailback. He is spotted about the 16-yard line. Gave him about three and a half, four yards. Three, three, long three. Brings up second and seven 
for Prairie Grove. In scoring position at the Malvin 16. Winters again under center. Two receivers split out to the right. Winters turns, gives to his fullback, cuts upfield. Tackle made by Trent Block well, at the 11. The, the Leopards are really, really aggressive. And uh, they're running a little misdirection back in them. And uh, uh, there's some holes there. And it's not because the Leopards are getting blocked out of them, Mike. It's because of, they're pursuing them and running themselves out of them. Showing third down and three. It's really about two and a half for Prairie Grove. Ball at the 11-yard line. Winners under center. Brings a man in motion. Now he's going to fake the give, looking to throw. Under some pressure. Going to be grabbed back at the 20-yard line. Nice, nice pressure. Devin Kirk with the sack for Malvin. <laughs> I couldn't get out of it. I couldn't get Devin's name out. Actually, I had about a cookie in my mouth. Margaret Baker's brought, brought us some cookies up here, and uh, I had I, I had an early lunch, and I was munching on a cookie. Great play. Fourth down here, uh, decision time. Fourth down, about 11. Looks like they're going to try a field goal. He's going to try a field goal. Washington in warm-ups was, it, it, I'm not, I hate to say it, before this kid kicks, and wasn't too impressed with the field goal kicker, but this does set up for a right-footed kicker. High snap, fielded cleanly. This kid is going to be well short. Well, bounds just out of the end zone. Leper's defense holds up. Well, they needed a fifth down on that play. <laughs> Could have used one. They don't get it tonight. And the Malvern offense ready to take the field once again. They'll get it. And about their own 20-yard line. 7.02 to go here in the first quarter. Well, Devin Kirk really put the lid on that one with that with the pressure. And then staying, staying with the quarterback, he tried to cut back. Devin had the speed and the ability to grab a hold of him and uh, throw him for, what, about a 7.5, 8-yard loss back there and really took him out of what they wanted to do. Warford working out a shotgun, takes a snap. Give up the middle. That is Jaquiri Dupree. Dupree hit it about the line of scrimmage and then driven back. He'll... Correct, like they'll spot him for no gain. It'll bring up second down and ten. Not much there. It was, was, uh, was kind of a bread and butter play that the Leopards run a lot of this year and uh, looked like the uh, Tigers had that one sniffed out. Bryson Barnes coming out for Malvern. Looks like Trent Block will enter the game. 6.33 to go, no score, or 6.33 to go in the first quarter. No score as Leopards have the ball second and ten to throw him 20 yard line. Warford again working out a shotgun. Brings a man in motion. Fakes the give. Now going to keep it. Left side. Warford with a running room. And runs out of bounds. He's got the first down up past the 30. It's like they'll put him at about the 31-yard line. And the Leopards get a new set of downs. Yeah, that's what makes Austin Warford so, so really dangerous. A nightmare for a defensive coordinator because he's sitting there looking up. He's got receivers out. He can pull up and throw that ball. And then if they, they run, the receivers are run off by the, you know, the corner, I'm excuse me, the corners and linebackers run off by the receivers, he can take off and go. And great footwork. Nice, nice speed. Ball spotted at the 31. Warford again working out a shotgun. Twins right, split left. Brings uh, Dupree in motion. Takes the give. Now rolling to his right. Looking to throw. He's got a man at the 40. First down. And that is Trent Block who gets to midfield before he's brought down. Well, great play. Great call for Fogelman there. They run it, run it to the right, run it to the right, and then they bring Brock, excuse me, <laughs> I get it, uh, Brock across a trailing into an open zone. And uh, Austin does a good job, just lays it out there and uh, picks up another big first and ten. One man split to either side, full backfield around Warford as he sets up in shotgun. Going to give to Dupree, trying the left side off the tackle. And he'll pick up four, almost five yards on the carry. They're going to spot him at the 46 of Prairie Grove. Jack Carey was really doing a good job of watching the white people bragged on him before, looking for that hole, following his blockers, and then using that speed and power to go. Second down, six for Malvin as they come to the line. Twins left, split right. Warford again working out a shotgun. Takes a snap, gives Hardiman up the middle. Hardiman's got a first down and more as he gets 
down to the 30-yard line. Tim Hardiman with a big gain, and they're spotting just shy of the 30. Well, Hardiman's just he's, he's a big physical kid. I mean, he's a tall kid, runs hard, and uh, found a hole, done an excellent job watching, moving to the right of these blockers, and then he gets out there and takes on a safety one-on-one -on -one and picks up another yard and a half, two yards. Nice run by Timmy. Twins left, split right, two banks in the backfield along with Warford. First and 10, Malvin. Now they're going to send a free in motion to the far side. Give up the middle, Hardman again. This time Hardman will get to the 29 yard line. Before he's brought down, pick up of about three on the play, bring up second and seven. Yeah, it's only, it's only hard of his hard running and strength that even got him that two and a half, three yards because he's hit right there at the line of scrimmage. One of them hit him and it took, took a couple guys to uh, slow him and bring him down. Looks like we're going to see a lot of Justin James on both sides of the ball as he goes back into the offensive huddle. Second down. Long seven, short eight, whichever way you want to look at it. Twins to either side. Warford alone in the backfield. Brings Barnes in motion. Takes the give to Barnes. Warford on the keeper. He is going to be hit and dropped at about the 29. So no gain on the play. Brings up third down. Nice job there by Dalton Kurt, Kurt Singer, the six foot, 210 pound uh, defensive tackle. Stayed at home and uh, just got a hold of Austin's foot for uh, stopping basic for no gain. Dupree back in for Malvin. 3.56 uh, left here in the first quarter, and a nothing, nothing ball game. Leopards moving. Jones and Barnes split to the far side. Looks like Don split to the near side. Two backs in the backfield along with Warford. He drives straight back, looking to throw under pressure. Far sideline, he's got a man. It is oh. incomplete. Well, the safety from the Tigers made a good break on the ball and got just in enough of it that uh, is out there for uh, Timmy Hardman. Tim just couldn't bring it in, and uh, nice play by their safety, but uh, uh, almost a catchable ball. But when you, when you got somebody coming across, it's kind of makes up fourth down. Fourth down, now, almost eight yards. Swings to either side. Warford looking to the sidelines. Takes a snap, drops straight back, throws over the middle. Ooh. That's incredible. Yeah. Looking for Dejour yeah. Dawn. The flag comes yeah. in, yeah. and it's going to be first down for Malvin with the interference. Well, the, the corner had it. That is uh, one thing that they talk. You see it on TV. He had that right hand on him, reached out with his left left hand and knocked the ball. But uh, he had his uh, had that right hand on his hip. And as an old defensive back, I can tell you. It's a really good way to know what the receiver is going to do if he can put that hand on his hip and tell, tell you, it tells you which way he's going to turn. I guarantee you, <laughs> the hips don't lie. The yeah. hips don't lie. Not always the way that belly button's going, that's where that player's going too. So anyway. That will give Malvern a first down. And uh, more importantly, he's going to give him the ball just inside the 15-yard line of Prairie Grove. Well, not only that, that, that was a catchable ball right in the right spot. And uh, that could have been a touchdown had it not been interference too. So... Twins right, split left now for Mallory. as Hardman sets up behind Warford. Hardman with the carry up the middle. He'll get down to the 12-yard line. Pick up five, a couple on the play. Bring up second down and eight for Mal. Malvin continues to pound on that inside between the tackles and uh, uh, soften up that middle, soften up that middle, and uh, offensive line's doing a good job, always getting some uh, positive yardage. 3.06 to go here in the first quarter. No score. Malvin threatening as they are at the 12-yard line. Warford again working out a shotgun. Turns. Nobody. Takes the give. Now Warford running off left tackle. He is down close to the five-yard line on a broken play. Warford turned around and the ball, gave the ball to his tailback, and his tailback wasn't there. He was on the right side. Warford was looking to hand it left. Left side, so there was a mix up there. Anyway, enough to uh, Austin's uh, athletic building and quick feet got it down inside of the... Inside the five, five down to three. It's a first down and goal. First and goal for the Leopards. One man split to either side. Full backfield for the Leopards. Justin James set up behind Warford. He gets the carry. James into the end zone. Touchdown! Well, they're using Justin James in there. They've used him quite a bit as a blocker, Mike. But I want to tell you something. We've seen him run sideline to sideline on that as a defensive linebacker from that center. He's got some speed. He's got some really good speed. 
excellent athlete. He's got some good size running him in there, too. You know, he's a couple hundred pounds, 5'11", a couple hundred pounds, and uh, he's a force. Torres gets the kick away. It is right down the heart. The Lippers lead 7 to nothing. 2.31 to go ahead in the first quarter. You're listening to Malvern Leopard Football. Everybody wants to know, what is your favorite thing about Larry's Pizza in Malvern? I don't know about you, but I like their fresh ingredients in their homemade pizzas. Well, I like their all-you-can-eat buffets on Tuesday and Friday nights. How many pepperonis are on one slice of pizza at Larry's? About like six to seven. Larry's Pizza in Malvern is open Tuesday through Sundays from 11 to 9 o'clock. Their buffets are on Tuesday and Friday nights at 5. We, we want, want the Malvern, Malvern Leopards, Leopards to have a successful football, football season. Go Leopards! Banking with fb and is always a touchdown. Hi folks, I'm Daryl Teeter and I support the Leopards all the way. You need to support the local talent and also the local businesses. And remember what Teeter says, the more we spend on our youth, the less we'll spend on prisons later. So let's keep the kids busy and keep them happy. Let's do our job and support and give the boys a great feeling and fill these bleachers full every night. So come to the ball game and come to Teeter's. We'll see you later. Back at Claude Mad Stadium, second round of the playoffs. Leopards lead 7 to nothing. 2.31 to go here in the first quarter, and Leopards set to kick off. Torres gets the kick away, angles it towards the sideline. It's going to go out of bounds, and Perry Grove is going to get a good field position yeah. to start up at the 35. Yeah, that's uh, a mistake there, but. Uh, but anyway, we, we have kicked that that high kick in the past anyway. So anyway, Leopards are going to hold stardom here, start uh, Prairie Grove Tigers off at their own 35 with 2.31 left in this one. If you just joined us, 2.31 left. Leopards just uh, the first quarter. In the first not quarter. To, not no, to go. No, it's in the first quarter. Although it could be a fast-moving ball game as both teams uh, relied primarily on the one. Prairie Grove comes to the line of scrimmage. Winners. Going to set up now in shotgun. Trips right. Winters takes snap. He's going to keep it off right tackles. Hit and dropped as he gets to the 38 yard line on the tackle for Malvern was Mason Morgan. Morgan did a good job there staying in his zone, in his zone, zone staying. Uh, so I had a chance to stand up side beside him for the coaching show, and I'm going to tell you something. That is a stop good young man. I mean, he is a big kid. Second down and seven for Perry Grove. They come to the line of scrimmage. Ball at the 38-yard line. Winners again working out a shotgun. Give right side. And tackle going to be made at the 40-yard line. Pick up of a yard, maybe two on the play. It'll bring up third down and five. Yeah, but all new comes comes trying to thunder in through there again and uh, find a hole to go. But uh, nice stop by the Leopards. Uh, that's a long five. I'm going to call it five and a half or six, third, third down here. Leopards need another three and out, and uh, off we go. Ray Rowe comes to the line of scrimmage. Winners again working out a shotgun. Trips right. Bartholomew set up to his right, and he's going to roll right. Looking to throw now, going to keep it. He's got running room. He's going to be dropped short of the first down by about a yard. Nice play by the Leopards out there. Nice recovery by Justin James to, to stop him short of that first. He's going to come James up about a half a yard short. James had dropped in the cover as he right. came up to uh, to get the quarterback winners. He's going to bring up fourth down. And, and Ron, this is something we've seen a lot of uh, so far in the playoffs. Teams going for it on fourth down. Yeah, we'll see what, what they do. they got their... 15 comes back in who had punted last time, Cooper Winters, and uh, he's set up under center. He's not punting, I'm guessing. I'm going to try it now. 
Give up the middle, big play. Prairie Rose is going to get the first down as they get down to the Malvern 40 yard line. Bartholomew on the carry. Yeah, there's a hole right there when you stack that many in. The, on the, that was actually number 30. The Daniel Schrock, the, uh, the, the line had him uh, 30 and 20 look a lot alike, but Schrock was number 30 on that play. And uh, once you get through that linebackers, you got a, a safety that's got to make it, and that's what happened. Leopards uh, tried to. Stop him at the line, didn't quite get it done. 20 seconds now to go in the first quarter. One man split to either side, Winters takes the snap. Face to give to Bartholomew, keeps it off the left side, hit and dropped at the 32. Good hit by Burks, but nonetheless, Winters is gonna get all the way to the Malvern 32 yard line. Yeah, that's one thing that it's nice to have, but you really see, hate to see, that's the end of the first quarter. Leopards leave this one seven to nothing. We'll be right back. Your plumbing problems too big for you to handle? Call Pure Flow Plumbing for all types of plumbing needs. Call us at 501-467-0095. We are open from 8 to 4.30, and we are available 24 hours for emergencies. Pure Flow Plumbing says go Leopards. We are going to have a look in Dr. Deaver's office. Here is his friendly staff. Oh look, it's a leopard. I'm pulling for the leopards. We're going to drill the opponents. For all your dental needs, call Stephen Eifert, DDS at 501-337-9559. No person or animal was harmed in the making of this commercial. Go Leopards! Back at Claude Mann Stadium, Leopards leading 7 to nothing here. And we are set to start the second quarter of play. And Prairie Grove has the ball at the Malvin 32-yard line. They come to the line of scrimmage. Winners will be under center. Twins left, split right. Give up the middle. Leverage right there. No gain on the play. And that's going to bring up third down and a couple for uh, Prairie Grove. Justin James and uh, Corky, that's what Coach Fogel, uh, Colton Welch, nicknamed Corky was in there, and uh, they were going nowhere on that one. Big third down here, big stop. Uh, Leopards need another stop here and uh, make these Tigers decide to do something on fourth down. Yeah, they got got it done a while ago. So it's, uh, third down and two, yard and a half really for Prairie Grove. Turn, give off the left side, nothing doing again. Leopards right there. And maybe a pickup of a half yard on the play. It's gonna leave Prairie Grove with another fourth down. They have wow. got to get to the 30 wow. yard line of mouth. Well, I tell you what, Corky was all over that when he had him right there at the exchange in the backfield and uh, Welch has come in and really, <laughs> they're gonna run left-handed, they're going to that left side, they're gonna have to deal with that big kid. Brings up fourth down and again about a yard and a half. Twins left, winners under center. Uh, give up the middle, nothing doing. Leopards are going to get the ball on down. Wow, I'm going to tell you something. Welch and Broughton were all over that play. They took the, the two guards in the center and absolutely pushed him right back into the quarterback. And then the quarterback handed off to number 20, who has been done with the, the bark by following your kid. Mikey, there was no place for him to go except uh, down. He had no chance whatsoever. Leopards get the ball first and 10 at their own 32-yard line, or about the 33, actually. So that was there was about a loss of a yard on that last <laughs> play. Warford working under center. Leopards in an I formation. Now they shift, and Warford's going to step back into a shotgun. Sends a man in motion. The far side turns, face the gear, rolling to his left, under pressure, spins out, throws, and fortunately gets rid of it. Be uh, Marcel Bedford was in the area. Uh, but uh, honestly, Ron, uh, Warford just made a smart play yeah, and, yeah. and, and uh, didn't lose yardage. Through the, yeah, I mean, before, he could, before they could get him wrapped up and get him down, Austin did a good job. Nice strength in his legs and his quarterback squared up, threw it out of bounds, and uh, we'll go second and ten. Nice play, Austin, just keeping his head and doing what he needed to do. Sometimes an incompletion is a good play. Yes, it is. Twins right, split left. Warford again working out a shotgun. Give up the middle. This time, not much running room for the Leopards. The ball carrier gets off. 
basically, well, actually going to lose about a half a yard on the play to bring up third and 11 for Malvin. I tell you what, Dalton Kurtzinger, the 6'2", 210-pound, number 52 linebacker, you can see him on Channel 15 tomorrow at 4 o'clock. Good football player. He's uh, he's causing some havoc in there, and uh, when he plugs a hole, it's, it's pretty well plugged. Well, they got him set up in the defensive line now. Trips left, split right. Warford work, again working out a shotgun. Takes a snap. Flag comes in. Warford looking to throw is going to be hit and dropped inside the 20. And I'm, that flag was thrown from well behind the line, but almost to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it was thrown out. I don't know what. I don't know what. That's a situation there again that uh, Austin's got to get rid of that ball. I think he thought he could get away. The penalty is going to be against Malvern. I, I assume and hold that uh, Perry Rove will decline the penalty and leave Malvern in a fourth down situation. Yeah, the coach is over there saying decline, decline, decline. So it's a lot of, not a good series by the Leopards right there at all. They, uh, uh, they've made, I don't know whether the Tigers changed their defensive stunts or whatever, but uh, they were all over the quarterback trying to pass that series. Leopards come to the line. Colton Welch set to punt for Malvern. 9.44 to go in the second quarter. The Leopards leading 7-0. The return man for Prairie Grove set up at his own 49-yard line. Welch gets a good snap. Gets a great kick away. Angles it towards the sideline. Takes a bit of a Malvern roll. And will be downed at the 43-yard line of Prairie Grove. So once again... Uh, Ron Cogwell does a, a great job of kind of turning the field over and giving the defense some run. Yeah, it gets, gets you out, to, uh, gives you the defense a little bit of breathing room and get the, gets the Leopards from the uh, having that uh, goal line at their backyard. First and ten for Prairie Grove. It's nice to have an open air feet. Okay, it is. Uh, lots of fresh air <laughs> coming through. <laughs> Pretty groove. At the line of scrimmage, first and ten. Winners under center, turns pitches. Near side, Leopards giving chase. And tackle made on number two, Colby Elkins, as he gets up to about the 47-yard line. Yeah, Javante Jones was out there, and he was all over the play and, and wasn't going to let him get wide, and, and that was the main thing. Pickup of about four on the play, brings up second and six for Prairie Grove. 9-17 again to go here in this first half of play. That's like as Mike said earlier, in really uh, fast moving uh, first quarter and, and, and going into the second quarter here with very, very, very few stoppages of the clock. Winners, turns, gives, Bartholomew, right side. Oh, Justin James wow. has got it covered. Justin James on the far side had the play Wrapped up very early. Javante Jones in on the play as well. You don't think Justin James can run. Turning the channel 13, 4 o'clock here at 585 here left in the second quarter. He absolutely runs him down and, and I mean runs him down quick, Mike. He just it's, it's, I mean he lost a four on the play. Brings up second, or excuse me, third and ten for Prairie Grove. Leonard's up under center, twins right. As Winters rolls to his right, he's under pressure. the pressure. He's hit as he lets it go. It's incomplete. Great play out there. Devin Kirk again for Malvern, supplying the pressure. Uh, Kirk had him on one side coming one way, and uh, Trey Broughton was coming up the other side and brings up a uh, fourth and ten, and we kind of expect Perry Grove to go ahead and punt this one away. But in high school playoffs, we never know. It's hard to tell by who's in the game as the quarterback is also the punter, Cooper Winters. Cooper is, Winters is back to punt and punt formation. Deep men from Malvern set up at about the 15, 20-yard line. Winters gets the snap, gets the kick away. It's going to bound at the 20-yard line, and Leopards let it go. Oh, wow. It's going to be down at the one. Wow. Mistake there. You got to... Uh, but anyway, the Leopards start 99 and a half yards away from Fader. Leopards will have the ball first and 10 from their own one yard line. Uh, 
as the offense comes on the field. 8.22 to go here in the first half. Lepers leading 7 to nothing here yeah. in the second round we, of the playoff. We are, we're talking about Colton Welch turning the field over. I tell you what, uh, their front winners, winners just did too. Warford under center, going to keep it. And he's going to go nowhere. He might get a yard on the play, get the Lepers out to the two-yard line. Yeah. Lepers need to get a first to ten to and get out here and uh, get some get some offense going. Kind of sped it on that last series. Jakiri Dupree and Justin James come in for Malvern. Got a nose cold. Second down nine for the Lepers as they come out. Give off the right side, oh. Justin James. James will get up to about the three-yard line, so pick up of another yard. It's going to leave the Malvern Leopards with a third down and seven. Yeah, they're going to give James a couple yards like you said. That's a third and a long seven, though, Mike, back there in your own backyard with uh, your back to your own goal. Yeah, it, and it's, yeah, you'd love to pass here, but that's a little scary proposition when you're backed up so near your own goal line. Warford again working out a shotgun, is looking to throw. Now I'm going to keep it. Throws, far side, looking for Bryston Barnes. Barnes has it in midfield. Butterfly. Oh my goodness, they're going to spot him out of bounds at the 40 goal, 40 yard line. Well, that's what you've got with two things. It's what you've got with Austin Warford and what you've got with John Fogelman. When you think you're going to do something, Coach Fogelman sees something. The coaches over there on our right, they see something, and they send Barnes one-on-one -on -one down there with a corner in the safety. They can't keep up, keep up with him. Big play for the Leopards. Marcel Bedford into the game for Malvin. 7-3 now to go in the half. Not only that, Mike, that was a well, perfectly thrown ball. Perfectly well thrown, thrown ball, yeah, absolutely. Twins left, twins right. One man in the backfield alongside Warford. First and ten for the Leopards. They give Dupree. Dupree cuts up field, hit and brought down at about just inside the Prairie Grove 35-yard line. Nice, nice run there. Nice hard run of a cheap badge of carry. Uh, hard run. One back to that previous play, though. The thing that really helped on that, too, is that offensive line. They were coming. That offensive line gave Austin the time to get his, get the receiver going and get his feet set, get his shoulders squared up, and, and uh, throw the ball. Holman in a tight end for Malvin as Warford again sets up in shotgun. Twins left, split right. Dupree set up to his right. Warford looking throw near side, complete to Bedford. Bedford at the 30, the 25, the 20. And he'll be run out of bounds at the seven yard line. Great job by Bedford. And he'll give the Leopards a first and goal from the seventh. Well, the one that made that goal, there's two people in from, from uh, I'll cover that later. Number 21 out there did a great job to free him up. Javante Jones. Jones really threw the key ball block to get him loose. Warford working out a shotgun, turns, gives two to Free up the middle. To Free hit and stop. A little slight loss on the play to bring up second and goal for Malvern from, we'll call it the seven and a half yard. Line. Yeah, Jackson DeBold, uh, six foot, 200 pound uh, defensive tackle. The little sophomore right there to stop that play. Major Dawn comes in from Malvern as Holman comes out of the game. Second and goal. From the seven, Don and Barnes go split to the far side. Bedford and Jones split to the near side. Option play, Warford on the keeper, breaks the tackle inside the five, gets down to about the two yard line, will bring up third and goal. Yeah, Austin did a good job then on the option. The option wasn't there. Their defensive end had overplayed and got a hold of Austin, but he was able to uh, break that tackle and get down inside of the two. Justin James in, as is Hardeman and Dupree. So you'll see a, a slew of running backs in the game for Malvern at this point. Never know which one's going to get it. Third and goal from the two, full backfield for Malvern. Warford working out a shotgun, turns and gives to James. Left side, James, touchdown, Malvern! Uh, they're using Justin James, Mike, when they get in there. He's got uh, 
you know, a little fresher legs, I think, from not playing much running back. This, but he's really strong, hard running, knowing he's fast. And uh, Coach Fogelman's are doing a really good job of uh, moving this ball around and getting everybody involved in this offense. Leverett score again with 4.59 to go in the first half. Jesus Torres on to kick the extra point. It is up, it's away, and it is good. Leopards lead 14 to nothing here at Claude Mann Stadium. You're listening to Malvin Leopard Football. Let me get this straight. My free checking is only free now if I use my debit card 28 times a month. I don't think so. Time to switch. Malvern National Bank has true free checking with mobile and online banking plus a free MasterCard debit card. I don't have to keep a minimum balance, no gimmicks. So I switch to Malvern National. Let's get serious. I'm not paying $7 a month for checking when I get it free at Malvern National. Malvern National Bank, free checking, no gimmicks. That's what I want. This is Darcy with Modern Care Medical Sales in Reynolds and Malvern. We are conveniently located in the doctor's complex by the Hot Spring County Hospital. Come by and see our large inventory of power chairs, lift chairs, wheelchairs, scooters, diabetic supplies, oxygen supplies, CPAP, braces, and supports. We are locally owned and operated with patient service and satisfaction as our number one priority. Please come and see us or call us at 501-337-9503. For 40 years, people have been coming to Western Sizzle for one thing, our flame kiss steaks. Slow cooked, Flame kiss from the top and sear from the bottom to lock in the flavor. Topped off with our famous gold dust seasoning, it's what makes the difference. Flame kissed, the definition of great steaks. Gotta get to Western Sizzling. Yeah. Back at Clown Mad Stadium, Weber's leading 14 to nothing, 459 to go here. In the first half, Leopard's getting set to kick off. Jesus Torres gets the kick away. Angle towards the sideline, fields it at the 13. Across the 20, cutting back to the right. Good running room, near side, run out of bounds up at about the 31, 32 yard line. Well, <clears throat> Jacoby Dupree was right there, number 34 on this side, and uh, kind of went to the inside, and looked around, waited, saw the guy break to the sideline, who was there to push him out of bounds. Uh, to make them stop inside the 35 again at about there, we're going to set it to the 33. Oh my goodness, they gave him nearly the 34. Yeah. Either way, a yard or two either way, the leopard defense has looked good so far. They've given up a, a few uh, big plays, but other than that, the, the Malvin defense has held, held firm all game. Yeah. It's just uh, still the backbone of this, comp of this team. Winters under center, two backs in the backfield. Winters turns, fakes the give, looking to throw, far side, far sideline. Leopard's out there, and pass goes incomplete. Good coverage out there. And I'm going to try, try to pick up the number. Well, it's uh, Birch was out there with him, is Jared Walker. Prairie Grove team not happy. If they didn't get an interference call, Josh Williams was the corner that was out there. Yeah. Josh, what? Yeah, okay. That, that's what I was looking at. I, Josh, I, saw, I saw 25 and 28, and I called 25, and it was Josh. My bad, Josh. Nice job, though. Got back there and got it covered up. Josh has battled through some injuries this year, but uh, when he's out there, he's been as solid as anyone. Yes, he in has. Position. Very, very valuable to this defense. Winners again under center. Second 10 for Prairie Grove. Fake to give now. Near side on a misdirection. Leopard's there, but a good gain up to the 41. will leave Prairie Grove with a third down and a couple. Well, that's that trap that Coach Fogelman was talking about. They get to go going each way, and then they uh, they pull the guard over there on, the, on that trap and open that hole up, and there was some running room there. Third down and about three for Prairie Grove. 420 to go here in the first half. Colton Welch coming on from Malvern. It's Deja Dawn exits. It's like Malvern's looking for a running play here on third and three. Winters under center. Turns pitch. Near side, and they've got nice, the first nice down. Nice job out there by the, by the uh, wide receiver on our defensive end quarter. Nice, nice job by the Tigers there. Bartholomew gets the 40-40 yard line of Malvern. It'll be a first and 10. 
Well, that's that sweep that Coach Fogelman said, we got to watch, you got to watch. Now just a quick pitch to the right and uh, caught the Leopards uh, going to the inside. First and 10, 3.54 to go in the first half as Prairie Grove comes to the line of scrimmage. One, three receiver split to the near side. Winner's gonna keep it. Right side. Like Prairie Grove may have got away with a hole there. Well, on the far side, but he gets the first down. That's more of that, more of that sweep that they, they run, they run, they run, and uh, they started turning the corners on the Leopards and uh, challenging our defensive ends. Ball down to the 32-yard line of Malvin. It's first and 10. Plenty of time for Prairie Road to get on the board. Trips right. Winters working out a shotgun now. Takes over the high it. over his head. Winters gonna have to run. He's losing yardage. Trying to break up the middle, and he's going to be dropped by Trent, or excuse me, by Quante Walker back at the 45-yard line. Yeah, you could tell that that one went over his head. There just wasn't much the kid to do. But that was Colby Elkins back back there, number two, uh, the junior quarterback, and uh, it went over Colby's head, and there wasn't, just wasn't much he could do except uh, run for his life. Big play to the defense. Big Grove comes back to line of scrimmage, second and about 24. Take the give, look, winners looking to throw underneath, pass complete at the 43, I was going to say incomplete at the 43 yard line and bring up third and long for Prairie Grove. The Leopards, every time Prairie Grove has seemed to get something going, the Leopard defense has come up with a big sack or a big stop and uh, hope to do it again right here with 2.51 left in this one in the first half. Leopards leading this one 14 to nothing. Winters gets the play from the sideline. Two, as Ron said, 251 to go here in the half. Winters gonna work out a shotgun as twins to either side. Takes a snap. Like it may have been trying to set up. There they are. Winters on the run. And he is gonna be he slides down at the 35 yard line. It's gonna leave. Uh, Prairie Grove about 13 yards shy of the first. It'll be fourth down. I'll be, Ron, I, I know with 2.33 to go, you, you're thinking go for it, but you don't want to give the Leopards, I, I don't want to give, me personally, I don't want to give the Leopards the ball as the 35. But they're going to, so they're going to try it as winners. He's going to work out a shotgun. He could pooch punt from here. Safeties are deep for Malvin as Winter takes a snap, looks to throw. He's under some pressure, throws for the sideline. It's caught by one of the Malvin coaches out of bounds. <laughs> and the Leopards are going to get the ball on downs at the 35. Yeah, that was, uh, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't that questionable of a call because Winners had plenty of time. He's wanting to go deep, deep into the uh, NR secretary, possibly into the goal line. Had some time, didn't have anything to do, so he throws it out. And it does run, and it looks like the Leopards are only rushing three. Yeah, and they drop it back yeah. in the coverage. Yeah, yeah we, had, we had everything pretty well covered up. And the thing about it is, even with the, with the three, with Broughton, and uh, looked like Cor Corky was in on that one, and, you know, we, we could put a lot of pressure on him. Two and four to go in the half. Leopards can go 65 yards for another touchdown as Warford works out a shotgun, looks to throw. Plenty of time. Now flushed out of the pocket, escapes one man, another. Now throws out in the flat, complete at the 40. That midfield tackle made. And the Leopards get a first down. Javante Jones on the reception. He'll stop the clock with a buck 54 to go in the half. Well, Austin does, does another good job there of escaping, and then he's still taken off, and he could have taken off and made some yardage. He saw when he wanted his favorite receivers out there, Javante Jones, and uh, hit him for a nice game in the first and 10. Leopards at the 49 on Prairie Grove. Warford takes a snap, looks to his left, throws. Near sideline, caught by Marcel Bedford, he's at the 30, the 25, and they're going to say he stepped out of bounds at the 25. It's another first down for Malvin with a minute 45 to go in the half. Nice move there, nice time. Uh, once again, Wolford is on, and I mean, when this kid gets on, he's, he's, he's hard to contain, not only with his on mic, but with his legs. He's got that dangerous just to go ahead and take off. 
looked like a defense for Prairie Grove. Yeah, a little fatigued out there at this point. Well, Prairie Grove's got a bunch of kids. Looks like they're going both ways, too, and uh, they've got to work out in the first half here. Warford brings a man in motion. It's Bryston Barnes. Takes the give. Now Warford's going to be hit right. dropped, and you've got to be a little more aware of that one. Kind of a slow developing play, yeah. and, and Warford got hit back at the 34 yard line. Loss of about almost 10 on the play. Yeah, Jacob, Jacob Call was for the uh, Tigers was all over that play, and uh, Austin just didn't quite feel him breathing, breathing in on him. Second long for Malvin as Warford gets the signal from the sideline. Twins to either side. Now we've got a flag down. They're going to say false start against Malvin. And that's going to back the Leopards up five more. Make it second and about 24. Ball is going to be on the 39-yard line. Leopards looks like they need to get to about the 14 for a first down. Yeah. Leopards need to uh, <clears throat> get away from some of these penalties and get back to that good offense they were running. Twins to either side as Warford sets up in shotgun as Hardeman set up to his left. Here they come. Pressure on. Warford lets it go. Far sideline. Ball is broken up out there. He was looking in for Dejour Dawn along the far sideline. Clock stops at 59 seconds. Yeah, had uh, a little bit too much air under the ball, and uh, number 28 for the Tigers really didn't know a hunter. 150-pound uh, defensive junior back doing an excellent job of coming over there. Leopards come back to the line of scrimmage. Warford working out a shotgun. Takes a snap, has some pressure. Screen pass set up to Hardeman. Hardeman hit and dropped. He'll get up to about the 33-yard line. I'll bring up fourth down for Mallard. While we were talking about uh, places to go for it, I, I think you've got to here. Clock continues to roll. Yeah, the Leopards, uh, worst case scenario, they'll give the, the ball up with uh, less than 20 seconds. So uh, we're going to call a timeout by Prairie Grove. Prairie Grove. We'll take a break here as well. 35 seconds to go here in the first half. Leopards lead 14 to nothing. You're listening to Malvern Leopard Football. Everybody wants to know. What is your favorite thing about Larry's Pizza in Malvern? I don't know about you, but I like their fresh ingredients in their homemade pizzas. Well, I like their all-you-can-eat buffets on Tuesday and Friday nights. How many pepperonis are on one slice of pizza at Larry's? About like six to seven. Larry's Pizza in Malvern is open Tuesday through Sundays from 11 to 9 o'clock. Their buffets are on Tuesday and Friday nights at 5. We, we want, want the, the Malvern, Malvern Leopards, Leopards to have a successful football, football season. season. Go Leopards! Hi folks, I'm Daryl Teeter and I support the Leopards all the way. You need to support the local talent and also the local businesses. And remember what Teeter says, the more we spend on our youth, the less we'll spend on presents later. So let's keep the kids busy and keep them happy. Let's do our job and support and give the boys a great feeling and fill these bleachers full every night. So come to the ball game and come to Teeter's. We'll see you later. Once again, we'll return to Claude Mann Stadium. Lovers leading 14 to nothing. We'll be facing a fourth down at about 19 for the first. They've got to get to the 14-yard line of Prairie Grove for the first down. Kind of expect the Leopards just to go for it on this one. You know, Austin Warford going to set up in shotgun. His Hardeman set up to his right. Trips right, split left. Here they come. Bring the blitz. Warford with yep. lots of room. Oh, he's got Bryce. He's got oh. Bedford. Bedford at the goal line, and it's broken up. Great play there by the defender. It looked like Bedford was going to roll in for the touchdown. Roll in for the touchdown, and uh, nice save there by the safety on the Tigers. But he got there. The ball got there, and just as the ball got there in Bedford's hands, he was there all over it. Uh, Leopards failed to capitalize on it. Uh, Penalties hurt him on that drive, and uh, anyway. The penalty in the big sack, lost for about 10 on yeah. the sack. Brings up first and 10 for Prairie Grove. They had the ball thrown 33-yard line, first and 10, with just under 30 seconds to go in the half. If you're Prairie Grove, you'd sure like to get on the scoreboard before you go to the locker room. Pitch, near side, Bartholomew. Bartholomew hit and dropped after a pickup of about a yard on the play. Clock continues to roll. 
We'll see if Prairie Grove elects to run another play. Second and nine. Leopards get the ball to open the second half, right, Mikey? Absolutely. It's uh, Prairie Grove with one opening toss. They elected to receive. They are going to take, take it to the locker room. 14 to nothing. Malvin Lees as the teams go in and warm up and get ready for the second half. Speaking of warming up, brother. <laughs> Once again, we're at halftime here at Claude Van Stadium. Leopards lead 14 to nothing. We'll return in a moment. For 40 years, people have been coming to Western Sizzlin for one thing our flame kiss steaks. Slow cooked, flame kissed from the top and seared from the bottom to lock in the flavor. Topped off with our famous gold dust seasoning. It's what makes the difference. Flame kissed, the definition of great steaks. Gotta get to Western Sizzlin. Yeah. Malvin going to be returning the second half kickoff. Once again, Prairie Grove won the opening toss, elected to receive. And we'll get to kick this one away to Malvin. Uh, you got to wonder, Ron, I, I see a lot of hands type people around here for Malvin. Do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah we got to uh, be holding on the hold there, there, Justin there. James, and, and Bedford's right there, real close. So, uh, Purifoy is over on the other side. Set for the second half kickoff. Kick is away. It is a low kick fielded at the 12 yard line across the 20 25. Dupree up over the 30 to the 33 yard line. And that's where Malvin will start first and 10. Nice run up through the edge. Jacob Dupree or Malvin and, uh, excuse me, our Modern, Modern Care Medical. Care. Modern Care Medical. I ought to know that. Modern Care Medical. Think. I would think. ISO player done a good job. Run the ball and he's really played well on special teams and uh, he's out there right now. A bit of spot there actually at about the 32 yard line. It's first and 10. Twins left, split right. Two backs in the backfield along with Warper. They give it to Dupree trying to find the corner. He's at the 30. Tripped up there but breaks the tackle. Up over the 35 to the 36 yard line. Pick up from about four on the play. Yeah, that last three yards, Jakiri just may have the last four yards. They gave him five. Just bowed up and uh, now they're going to give him four. Anyway, just bowed up and uh, took on a couple of tacklers and uh, made a couple more yards. That was second and six. Twins right, split left. Two backs again in the backfield with Warford. Working out of shotgun. Takes a snap. Going to give up Hardeman. the middle Hardeman. Hardeman hit at the 39 and wrapped up there. He'll pick up a couple, maybe three on the play. We'll see. They're going to spot him just shy of the 40. He'll leave Malvin with a third down and... What, run or long two? Long two. Hardman just ran into a big block of big, big wall of white and uh, the white jerseys of the Tigers from uh, visiting Prairie Grove there, and there just wasn't any place for him to go. Ran hard, just ran into a wall. Justin James in now for Malvin. Full backfield, three backs in the backfield, long with Warford. One man split to either side. Warford takes a snap, given to Dupree. Dupree! Wrapped up as he gets it to the 44-yard line. He'll have the first down. Nice speed showed there by linebacker number 44 come across there. Landon West, a 6'2", 205-pound. We sure doesn't look that big. They yeah. 6'2", 200-pound uh, senior linebacker. But uh, that's uh, I, was, I think I was 6'1", about 165 in our program. So I know how that works. Oh, yeah. Get up the middle to Hardeman again. This time Hardeman tripped up as he gets up to about the 47. Gain of a couple on the play. Lee Malvin with second and eight. Just tuned in to check the score. Stay with us. Leopards lead this one 14 to nothing with 10-15 left to go here in the third quarter in the second round of the playoffs. Javante Jones <laughs> split to the near side. Three receivers split to the right. Hardeman in the backfield with Warford. We're going to give it to Hardeman. Big run up the middle at the 40-yard line. He's got the first down as he's wrapped up at the 31. Well, they sent a linebacker. When they sent the linebacker, the call we had went right to the hole where the linebacker should have been. And uh, big old 69 for the Leopards. That's Michael Berry had uh, moved his man out. And Timmy just went through there 
pretty well untouched till we got into the secondary. Nice run, nice play by the Leopards. First and 10 from Malvin, ball with a 31. Barnes, Bedford, and Don goes split to the far side. Javante Jones alone to the left side. Swing pass underneath, complete to Bedford, and minimal gain on the play as he was hit immediately. Gain of about a yard, leave Malvin with second and nine. Yeah, that's one to get the ball out there in uh, Bedford's hands and Marshall's the hands and uh, let him make a move, shake a guy and lose a guy and uh, pick up something. Wasn't quite, wasn't quite able to get away from the ball carry, but uh, completion, positive yards anyway. Dupree in for Malvin. Twins right, split left. Justin James in as well. Give. Dupree up the middle. Dupree with another first down. He's going to be wrapped up at the 13-yard line. Jacare went through there with some authority and some speed. Nice hole, and uh, when he went through there, he had up ahead of steam and uh, really did a good job. Nice job of, of seeing the hole, hitting the hole, and uh, not like I said, not only seeing the hole, but hitting the hole with his, uh, with his speed. Nice play by Jacare. Ball spotted just outside the 12. Two backs in the backfield, along with Warford. Takes a snap, going to give to Hardeman, up the middle. Hardeman will work his way for about a yard on the play. Lee Malvin with second and nine. 8.40 to go here in the third quarter. Malvin leading 14 to nothing. Well, Malvin's taking this uh, kickoff, opening kickoff of the second half, and uh, getting first downs, keeping the ball on the ground, and doing an excellent job of uh, opening holes, and uh, nice job by the running backs. Like Hardeman and Dupree in the backfield along with Warford. They're going to give it, fake the give. Well, they do give it to Dupree. Dupree holds the man and is brought down at the four-yard line. He's going to be about a yard shy of the first. Nice play there. Instead of, <laughs> instead of trying to go over him around, go, go through him around him, uh, just, just, him. just jumped over him and uh, picked up uh, positive yards. Third and, uh, what we got, third and one at the three, Mike? Yeah, the third down the yard, yard and a half. We'll spot him just inside the five-yard five line. Justin line James line. comes in for Malvin. Bryson Barnes goes split to the far side. Looks like that. James Jones. Jones split to the near side. Can he give to Hardeman, up yeah. the middle, Hardeman. He's got the first, and he's gonna be stopped about a yard outside the goal line. Yeah, I was getting ready to say they brought James in there like we've seen him in the past for his blocking ability, and Tim just got in behind big old number seven, and, and uh, Justin did a really good job of backing the guy out, and I thought, thought Tim was going to get in, but just couldn't quite get. Hardeman out of the ball game now. Dupree is going to set up to Wolford's left. Three receivers in from Allen, two to the left, one to the right. Wolford. Takes the give. Now he's going to keep left side. Touchdown, Malvern. <laughs> I'm not sure that was the call play. I don't know whether he was supposed to give that ball to Jacari or not, but uh, there was an absolute collision there. Tim uh, uh, Austin just grabs the ball, does a 360, and comes around to his left and scores, Mike. Like I say, not sure it was called that way, but Wolford sure worked out. Made it happen. Sure worked out well, didn't it? Torres is on to kick the extra point. Good snap, good hold, the kick's away. It is good as well. 7.09 to go here in the third quarter. Malvin leads 21-0. You're listening to Malvin Leopard Football. You believe this? My bank sends me this letter saying I don't have free checking anymore and now I gotta pay eight bucks a month. Forget them. Malvern National Bank has free checking and I switched. Why not? Free mobile and online banking, a free MasterCard debit card, free e-statements. Write all the checks I want, free. No minimum balance. Get serious, I'm not paying some bank eight bucks a month for checking when I get the same thing at Malvern National for free. There's free checking at Malvern National Bank, and that's what I want. Uh, I like working at Sykes because I get to help people. Uh, helping people is uh, a big part of, of what, I, what I'm about, what I like to do. I like working at Sykes because it's a good learning environment and everybody is just wonderful. They work with you, everybody's nice. It's just a good place to work. We'll see you at Sykes.
Your plumbing problem's too big for you to handle? Call Pure Flow Plumbing for all types of plumbing needs. Call us at 501-467-0095. We're open from 8 to 4.30, and we are available 24 hours for emergencies. Pure Flow Plumbing says, Go Leopards! Back at Claude Mann Stadium, Leopards leading 21 0, 709 to go here in the third quarter. Torres kick is away, angled towards the sideline, fielded it out the three. Five, ten yard line, lots of Leopards there, they're going to make the stop deep in Prairie Grove territory. They'll put him at the ten yard line. I'll tell you what, Dupree was down there, just carried Dupree was down there, and he runs on this left, I've got him on this left side out here on the wing. They send him down there with his speed, his athletic ability, and everybody seems to want to run that turn return back to the right. And when they do it, they run right in, right in the number 34, and they can't block him, and they can't do anything with him. And uh, consequently, uh, they're starting at their own 10-yard line. First and 10 from the 10. And officials blow the whistle before either team really breaks huddle. I'm not sure what the discussion is about. It's like they're calling for a change, I guess, in the time. They're still not sure what the discussion is. They're going to say, what's going on down there? What are they doing? They're doing something. Okay, they're going to put, say, seven minutes, ten seconds on the clock. So he ran off, I guess, what, 14 seconds uh, extra. All right, so here we are, 17 to go in the quarter. Lampers leading 21 nothing. Give off the left side, Bartholomew. Bartholomew hit the line of scrimmage, and he'll be dropped there. Well, once again, coming up from the safety spot, which we saw a lot of last week, number four, Kalen Burks, just does a really good job. This sophomore's really grown up and really played some good football. And uh, we talked about stopping that sweep, Mike, and, and that's what they did on that one, and they need to continue doing that. No gain on the play. Actually, loss of about a half yeah. yard. Yeah. Second and ten, clock continues to roll. Down to 6.35 to go here in the third. That was ate up a lot of clock with that opening drive. Yeah, they get a three and out here. We'll see them eat up a bunch more of it. Yeah, yeah right, off the left side, side again. No running room. Ball comes loose, covered back. They're, They're going to say he's down at the ten-yard line. Yeah, he was down Trey Broughton, and uh, also in the third course was Mason Morgan, and uh, then you throw Justin James in them in that bunch. Kind of anything, any any fake place for a kid to go. Third down and ten for Prairie Grove. Winners, the quarterback, going to set up under center. One receiver split to the right side, two backs in the backfield. Winners, face again, rolls to his right, looking to throw under pressure, throwing down the middle. He's got a man, and oh. incomplete. Well, as Winners overshot his receiver. Well, the numbers were closing, but uh, he was wide open. Uh, our safeties our safeties on that, when they went up to run support, run support, and uh, as a safety, you can't do that. You just, uh, you, you know, you got you to gotta hold your ground, play your zone, and... Uh, uh, got by with one there because he hit him in stride and uh, he's still one running. One of our guys that had to catch him. Fourth down and ten. Prairie Rose set up to punt, but under that he was under some pressure and trying to get a ball off too. So return men from Alvin set up at about the 47 yard line of Prairie Grove. High short kick. And the Lepers are going to have to run away from this one. It's a short kick going to be covered at the 37 yard line of excuse me, about the 32-yard line of Prairie Grove. Yeah, I did get uh, Prairie Grove punter, and I believe that was Cooper Winters again, did not get the ball turned over and uh, puts the Leopards in excellent field position, leaving this one 21 to nothing, 531 left here in the, the uh, third quarter, and uh, Leopards are looking to add some more to this lead. Ball spotted at the 35. Leopards have it first and 10, look to build on that 21-point lead. Barnes and Jones come split to the near side along with Bedford. Like Dejour Dawn split to the far side. Warford takes a snap. Give. 
up the middle. Not much running in there for the Leopards. This tackle made at the 35. Yeah, Hardeman once again ran into a into a white shirt, and that was in, was in the person of number 30. There, uh, one of the linebackers, Daniel Shock, the uh, six foot, 192 pound linebacker, and uh, I need to see the, the tapes and measures they're using on these kids. Second 10 for Malvin. Trips left, split right. As Warford sets up a shotgun, takes a snap, drops straight back, looking to throw under some pressure. Escapes a couple guys. Now rolling to his right. He's got lots of running room. He's going to be hit at the 20-yard line. He's got the first down. They're going to spot him at about the 17. Well, that was one of those situations that uh, Austin could have thrown and he had a man deep, but uh, he was covered. So Austin forced the guy out of the coverage because when he took off, he... Uh, he made, uh, my gosh, Mikey, what he pick up, uh, 12, 13, 14, 15 yards. Nice right. run. That's uh, 17, 17 yards on that run. Yeah. Ball at the 17-yard line. Warford brings Barnes in motion. Now looking to throw far side. Oh. Uh, just undershot his man, was looking looking up to Bryson Barnes and under, underneath the route. Yeah. Just kind of short on him out there and... Uh, Austin knows it, said, uh, give me another shot at that one. Second and 10 from Alvin. Jakiri Dupree back in, our modern care medical isolated player of the game. Bryson Barr is going to split to the far side along with Deja Don, Javante Jones. Split well out to the left. Two backs in the backfield. Give near side Dupree. Dupree at the 20, the 15, and five. <laughs> Dove over the 10-yard line. They'll put him at the six. That will be another leopard first down. Nice run there by Jacari Dupree, our uh, modern care ISO player. I'm telling you what, we're, we're, we're doing quite well this year, you and I picking our ISOs. Anyway, nice run. Uh, showed the burst of speed to look for his blockers and uh, just done, done what he's done well all year. Just really, really did a good job of... Uh, seeing what was there and, and then taking advantage of it. So we're going to put the ball right about the seven yard line. It'll be first and goal from there. 4.33 to go here in the third quarter. The left is leading 21-0. We'd like to add to that here. Twins right, split left. Hardeman and Dupree in the backfield along with Warford. They're going to give to Hardeman. Hardeman inside the five. And they're going to put him just outside the goal line, about a yard uh, one yard out. One yard <laughs> well, Tim, Tim wanted that one, didn't he, Mike? He was really fighting for that. Nice run by Hardeman there. Over, once again, over that left side of our line. And those guys, I'll tell you what, Michael Berry's just done an outstanding job in there. Him and Corky on that side of the line. And they're just really doing a good job. And then you throw the help of uh, the center. And that would, of course, be Jacob Elliott. Here we get up the middle of Hardeman, touchdown, Malvern. Well, I tell you what, Corky and, and uh, they sat there and, they, and they're doing so well over there that they're just going to let Michael Berry and, and uh, Welch go ahead and open those holes up for them and a nice run. Let us take this from the 27 to nothing with 3.43 left here in the third quarter on a nice crisp football night here in, in Malvern, Arkansas. Jesus Torres is on the kick, the extra point. Jay Golden, the holder. Good snap, good hold, the kick's away, and it is good. The Leopards lead 28-0, 3.43 to go here in the third quarter. You're listening to Malvern Leopard Football. Let me get this straight. My free checking is only free now if I use my debit card 28 times a month. I don't think so. Time to switch. Malvern National Bank has true free checking with mobile and online banking, plus a free MasterCard debit card. I don't have to keep a minimum balance, no gimmicks. So I switched to Malvern National. Let's get serious. I'm not paying $7 a month for checking when I get it free at Malvern National. Malvern National Bank. Free checking, no gimmicks. That's what I want. Uh, I like working at Sykes because I get to help people. Uh, helping people is uh, a big part of, of what, I, what I'm about, what I like to do. I like working at Sykes because it's a good learning environment and everybody is just wonderful. They work with you, everybody's nice, it's just a good place to work. We'll see you at Sykes.
Banking with FB&T is always a touchdown. Back at Claude Nolan Stadium, Lumpers leading 28-0, 3.43 to go here in the third quarter. Jesus Torres gets the kick away. Nice kick. Let me feel it at the 11. Kind of a spread return, and Lumpers have the cover. Well, ball comes loose. Lumpers under the pile. We'll see if they came up with it. Yeah, lovely ball. Got a little rainbow return. It didn't work out for Prairie Grove and Malvin. Well, I tried to uh, try to run a little inside reverse back on the inside back uh, back to their right, and uh, you know, on the cold night, it's kind of hard to hang on to that ball and then uh, to turn it over to the Leopards here. Leopards get uh, touched down here, and they'll start to mercy clock. Leopards with the football. Warford working out a shotgun as the free set up to his right. Brings a man in motion, that's Bars. Now he drops back, looking to pass. Throw it towards the end zone, he's got Holman out there. Touchdown, Malvern! What a play, nice play. You know, Holman's got, we talked all week long, all year long about the, the ability that Holman's got, the weapon he's got, a big target out there, great hands, great, nice speed. Doesn't have great speed like his dad would. <laughs> no. Dalton's got good speed, very good speed, and a uh, big, strong kid, and uh, he was out there wide open, and uh, it was good to see him get that touchdown. Torres is on to kick the extra point. Kicks away, and it is good. So once, so once again, Mike, for the second time in the playoffs, the Leopards turn the mercy clock on on the opponent, so uh, this fourth quarter should go pretty quick. 3.30 to go here in this third quarter. You're listening to Malvin Lovely. We're going to keep it here. They're about to kick off again. Yeah, they're about to kick off. And, uh, Torres back on the kick for Malvin. Ron said the mercy clock will start from here with a 35-point lead for Malvin. Probably going to see a more straightforward return this time <laughs> from Perry Grove. Yeah. Kicks away. It is a high, long kick. Fielded at the nine-yard line. Up there, now they're going to ride again. And then this time Bartholomew runs out of bounds at the 21-yard line. That's where Perry Road will start first and ten. Yeah. I guess when they this ball starts, snaps this time, the mercy clock kicks in. It will kick in at that point. Malvin and hitting in the end zone. I guess this that was the first one through the air tonight, Ron. Right? Yes, it was. Nice play. The Holman was out there, and uh, Austin put it right out there where, uh, where Holman could catch it, and uh, Dalton did a great job. Winners turns, gives up the middle. The gain is to about the 23-yard line, almost the 24. Pick up about three on the play to leave. Prairie Grove with second and seven. Once again, uh, less than two and a half minutes here in the third quarter. The Leopards lead this one 35 to nothing, and uh, hopefully we can put this one away here pretty quick. Twins left, winners under center. Looking to throw, rolling to his left. Throwing down the far sideline. Leopards have a man out there in coverage. Nothing doing <laughs> for Prairie Grove. That time it was Jared Walker on the coverage. Now, Walker did a good job. Uh, they were throwing it out there and, and uh, throwing it into double coverage and hoping for the best, I think. And that's probably what we may see a lot of here, you know, in the rest of the game. Uh, Leopards get the ball in a couple of possessions, and they can really – Really put put some time on the on the uh, on the time. Take some time off the clock. I'm sorry. Third and uh, third and eight here. Tigers in there. Back to pass. Ready to go. Complete first down for Prairie Grove up to the 40 yard line. Their own 40 yard line. Uh, just got an update. Uh, on the other playoff games in progress, McGee is ahead of Clarksville at this time. 
Uh, Eva Springs is ahead of Farmington, and Nashville and the Queen are tied. Are tied. First and ten for Pedro. Clock continues to roll. As we near the one minute mark here in the third quarter, they come back to the line of scrimmage. Winner is up under center. There's one man split out to the right. The winner will run the far oh, side. Fine. Good running room for the Tigers. Colby Elkins on the carry, and he's going to be about a half yard shy of the first. Like I said, the clock continues to run with uh, 39, 38 sec seconds here left, and we probably will probably one more playoff there, and we'll go into the fourth quarter. Unless something happens here with the Leopards leading this one uh, 35 to nothing. Tigers come back to the line of scrimmage. Uh, two men split to the left. One is under center, two backs in the backfield. Give off the middle. First down for Prairie Grove. As running back gets up to about the 43, maybe the 42-yard line, and that should be the last play of the third quarter. 35 nothing as we end the third quarter of play here in the second round of the playoffs. Malvin Leedy, you're listening to Malvin Leopard Football. Hi, folks. I'm Daryl Teeter, and I support the Leopards all the way. You need to support the local talent and also the local businesses. And remember what Teeter says, the more we spend on our youth, the less we'll spend on presents later. So let's keep the kids busy and keep them happy. Let's do our job and support and give the boys a great feeling and fill these bleachers full every night. So come to the ball game and come to Teeter's. We'll see you later. Everybody wants to know, what is your favorite thing about Larry's Pizza in Malvern? I don't know about you, but I like their fresh ingredients in their homemade pizzas. Well, I like their all-you-can-eat buffets on Tuesday and Friday nights. How many pepperonis are on one slice of pizza at Larry's? About like six to seven. Larry's Pizza in Malvern is open Tuesday through Sundays from 11 to 9 o'clock. Their buffets are on Tuesday and Friday nights at 5. We, we want, want the, the Malvern, Malvern Leopards, Leopards to have a successful football, football season. Go Leopards! Winners under the ball. Back to pass. Look at the open. Pass complete at the 31, gain up to the 26-yard line. Obviously, the Leopards are playing a little bit of softer uh, prevent defense, and as we probably get down here, I imagine they'll tighten up now down about the 25-yard line. And uh, 11:35 to go in this ball game. Alvin leading 35 nothing. Three rows. Looking to get on the scoreboard for the first time tonight. Two receivers split out to the right. Bartholomew sets up in the backfield. And he'll get the carry. Up the middle, big game for Bartholomew. Inside the 15, down to the 9-yard line. That'll be another first down for the Tigers. Uh, looking out there, we've got some new numbers out there. We're going to give these kids some calls. Uh... DeAndre Hart's out there in the backfield. I see Purifoy out there. Uh, Dylan Crutchfield. AC Johnson's out there. Crutchfield. Uh, and, then, and then in the middle, we got Corey Simpson in there. So, uh, winners looking to throw underneath, right at the goal line, and touchdown for Prairie Grove. So they get on the board with. 10.33 to go here in this ball game. Yeah, okay, I'm trying try, try to get the kids out there, but uh, Khalid Don, number 26, is also out there, and uh, Chris Bell's in. Pretty good, really set up for, or setting up, I right, for the extra point. Clock stops with 10.15 to go here in the ball game. High snap fielded cleanly by the snapper. The kicks away. It's good. And that will put the score at 35 to 7. 10-15 to go in this ball game. You're listening to Malvin Leopard Football. We are going to have a look in Dr. Deaver's office. Here is his friendly staff. Oh look, it's the leopard. I'm pulling for the leopards. We're going to drill the opponents. 
For all your dental needs, call Stephen Eifert, DDS at 501-337-9559. No person or animal was harmed in the making of this commercial. Go Leopards! This is Darcy with Modern Care Medical Sales and Reynolds in Malvern. We are conveniently located in the doctor's complex by the Hot Spring County Hospital. Come by and see our large inventory of power chairs, lift chairs, wheelchairs, scooters, diabetic supplies, oxygen supplies, CPAP, braces, and supports. We are locally owned and operated with patient service and satisfaction as our number one priority. Please come and see us or call us at 501-337-9503. Back at Cardman Stadium, Leopards leading 35-7. to The Prairie Grove Tigers just got on the board for the first time tonight. Nine-yard pass. Got the Tigers in the end zone. And it's 35-7. The Leopard team with the good hands people out there. The All-State team from Malvin. Hate to give them one, one free advertising. One man deep, our uh, modern care ISO player, uh, Jakiri. Dupree is back as the single safety and everybody else is up on the front. Expecting an onside kick and probably expect, hoping, or not hoping, expecting it to come over. It's going to come to the left. To come our left side from their right side because that's where they've got the numbers. Onside kick, fills it cleanly. Deja Dawn covers it at the 49 of Perry Rose. So the Leopards will take the ball with 10-14 to go in this ball game. See what kind of offensive, uh, looks like uh, the Leopards are going to run the twos out there and uh, give these youngsters, some of these youngsters, a chance to play. And uh, Holman's going in as a quarterback. So Holman's going to do it all. He caught him at, he's uh, so he catch one, one and throw one. He can say one, one, catch one, throw one, and roll one in. And uh, I'm going to tell you something, it's not expecting too much to expect that out of Dalton Holman because uh, he can run them in, he can catch them, and he can throw them in. The Leopards are going to work the clock. Comes the line with 10 seconds on the play clock. First and 10, ball to 49 off Prairie Grove. Holman takes a snap, give underneath, and fakes the give. Holman on the keeper, far side. Holman in a foot race is going to be run out of bounds at the 20-yard line. Well, we almost got you in. Don't, don't, darn it. That is probably... I mean, he feel, I'm going to tell you something, folks. We're 935 in, and we've been doing this for 13 years, and I can count on that by hand how many times my play, my play man has been completely fooled. I can count, and I've got fingers and digits left, and uh, Mikey was absolutely fooled on that by Holman. Yeah, he was 11 men on the defensive he side. Sure did. He sure did. Holman again working out a shot. Of course, I, I knew where it was all the time anyway. I just got letting you make a fool. <laughs> <laughs> We've got a timeout on the field. We're going to take a break as well. 9.13 to go in this ball game. Malvin leads 35-7. to You're listening to Malvin Leopard Football. For 40 years, people have been coming to Western Sizzle for one thing. Our flame-kissed steaks. Slow-cooked. Flame-kissed from the top and seared from the bottom to lock in the flavor. Topped off with our famous gold dust seasoning. It's what makes the difference. Flame-kissed. The definition of great steaks. Gotta get to Western Sizzling. Yeah. Uh, I like working at Sykes because I get to help people. Uh, helping people is uh, a big part of, of what, I, what I'm about, what I like to do. I like working at Sykes because it's a good learning environment and everybody is just wonderful. They work with you, everybody's nice. It's just, Good place to work. We'll see you at Sykes. Back at Cardman Stadium, Leopards leading 35 to 7, 9-13 to go in the ball game. Leopards at the Prairie Road 20-yard line, first and 10. Holman at quarterback from Malvern now. Holman's turns, gives this time to his tailback. Gain up to about the 17 yard line. Looks like the Perry Grove uh, coaching staff's giving some of their younger players some uh, playoff experience here and then uh, getting them in here on uh, 
on this in this last quarter late in this one uh, down 35 to 7. 8.45 to go. Mikey, I'm going to go ahead and close the book on this one, you know. Yeah, you, you are a good closing dude. I'm doing good. We're doing good at it this year. Oh, and again, working out a shotgun. There goes the first. Yeah, left the right side. The five-yard line. Touchdown, Melvin. Uh, that's Monte Hernandez, and that's the freshman that uh, we put in last year in the ninth grader and got his, we thought, maybe his only varsity, but he comes in and gets his second touchdown here in the playoffs and uh, tell you what, the young man's really got some good vision, got some speed and uh, the kid is, keeps his head straight up, screwed on straight and, and he's got a good good future with these Leopards. Kick is away and the extra point is good. It's 42-7, 8-17 to go in this football game. You're listening. We turned the mercy clock back on. There you go. <laughs> You're listening to Malvin Leopard football. Hi folks, I'm Daryl Teeter and I support the Leopards all the way. You need to support the local talent and also the local businesses. And remember what Teeter says, the more we spend on our youth, the less we'll spend on prisons later. So let's keep the kids busy and keep them happy. Let's do our job and support and give the boys a great feeling and fill these bleachers full every night. So come to the ball game and come to Teeter's. We'll see you later. Back at Carl Mann Stadium, 42-7. Malvern leads Prairie Grove here in the second round of the playoffs. As Jesus Torres set to kick off. Gets the kick away. Fielder back at the five-yard line. Across the ten, trying to find room. And <laughs> guess who's that made at the 18, 19-yard line? I was watching our ISO player, and uh, she carried the play. I have watched him. I love special team players. They play, play and play hard. And I was watching him, get, and the way he positions himself, the way he sets himself up to tackle, just, uh, you know, if you watch him on tomorrow, Channel 13. And... Uh, You'll see how special teams are really supposed to and why he's such a special player. Craig Grove going to get the ball at their own 19-yard line, first and 10. Two receivers split out to the right. Give off the right side. Good running room. Tackle made after a first down. Gain up to the 30 three, almost the 34-yard line. As Ron said earlier, several yeah. new leopards out there. Dylan Crutchfield uh, was in on that tackle, number 33, and uh, sending, some new, sending some more kids out. Darian Hill out there from Alvin. Matt Tidwell over on the corner. Cody Smith, Jr. out there on, uh, setting out on uh, the other corner. Tidwell being a safety. Fake the give, looking to throw. Let us give some pressure. Throw, middle of the field. Uh, catch made, and big run after the catch, but the tackle finally made well in Malvin territory down around the 25, 24-yard line. Yeah, it's landing west. Uh, I guess they didn't take all of the ones out. West is in there and has played a lot. Uh, Jacob Storley, the quarterback now for Prairie Grove. Looks like they've also got Bartholomew in there. So uh, trying to put some more scores or points on here to make this look a little more, uh, more than what it's not, which it's been really a six minutes to go here in the ball game as Prairie Grove. Quarterback keeps his storyly off the right side, and he's up around the first down marker, up inside the 15. Yeah. Coming in from now is DeAndre Hart. Yeah, I, uh, I was bragging on the coaching staff over there for sending some new kids in, and they run the ones back in. So, anyway, trying to make it look what it's not, but, you know, you, you know. Jake Golden in at corner for Malvin. You can paint a barn brown, but it's still a barn, isn't it? <laughs> Give near side this time. Prairie Grove trying to get on the score for the second yeah, time tonight, yeah. and they will. Oh, congratulations. 15-yard run. 5-17 to go in the ball game. Mm. 
A lot of class shown here by the Malvern. Uh, I know how competitive Coach Scarborough is. I know what he thinks of his defense. And I'm telling you what, I, he wants to send that one number one punch back out there and shut him down too fast. Uh, but uh, nice classy move by the Leopards here, letting these young men play. And uh, low snap fielded well by the holder, and the extra point is good. It's 42-14, 5-17 to go in this football game. We'll take a short break. We'll be back in a moment. Everybody wants to know, what is your favorite thing about Larry's Pizza in Malvern? I don't know about you, but I like their fresh ingredients in their homemade pizzas. Well, I like their all-you-can-eat buffets on Tuesday and Friday nights. How many pepperonis are on one slice of pizza at Larry's? About like six to seven. Larry's Pizza in Malvern is open Tuesday through Sundays from 11 to 9 o'clock. Their buffets are on Tuesday and Friday nights at 5. We, we want, want the, the Malvern, Malvern Leopards, Leopards to have a successful football, football season. Go Leopards! You believe this? My bank sends me this letter saying I don't have free checking anymore and now I gotta pay eight bucks a month. Forget them. Malvern National Bank has free checking and I switched. Why not? Free mobile and online banking, a free MasterCard debit card, free e-statements, write all the checks I want, free. No minimum balance. Get serious, I'm not paying some bank eight bucks a month for checking when I get the same thing at Malvern National for free. There's free checking at Malvern National Bank, and that's what I want. 5.17 to go here in the football game. Leopards well in, had the game well in hand, 42-14. Look, uh, if I told you I'm cold. <laughs> I say old, I'm old and cold. <laughs> Pretty Rose set to kick off Malvin again with the good hands team out there. Once again, Ja'Carri Dupree, the single safety, and uh, we expect another onside kick, right? Ah, you would think so. Yeah, I mean, granted, you're, you're not coming back uh, 28 points with uh, 5 minutes, 17 seconds left, but, uh, you yeah, know, I guess you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, I, I guess. Yeah, they look to be actually setting up this time for a uh, regular kickoff. Yep. And angle towards the sideline. Two Leopards converge on it. Now Burks on the return. He'll get up over the 20 to about the 23-yard line. The Leopard offense comes back out. Right at five minutes to go in this ball game. Clock continues to roll. Got a little guess. Leopards have really, Mike, have really put together another complete football game. I mean, we saw it last week against what, uh, what was a pretty good Gosnell football team. This, this, I'm going to tell you something. This is a not good fit. This is a good football team. They, they won last week. They won last week, and they both of these teams that uh, both teams that we played last week and this week have got seven, eight wins per season. And uh, Holman takes a snap, give right side, gain up to the 25-yard line. Tariq Brown on the on the carry there, the uh, wide receiver, defensive back, junior. Tariq's getting some look at tailback and uh, doing quite well. We're brought down to the four-minute mark on this one. Counting it down. Like I said, I closed the book on a while ago. But uh, well, well, you know, we can go ahead and say at this yes. point, the, the Leopards are going to get uh, the winner of the Nashville the Queen game uh, back here at Cloudman Stadium next Friday night. Friday night. Twins right, split left. Holman working out a shotgun. Give underneath. Off the right side and gain up to about the 28-yard line. Correct me if I'm wrong, and I imagine Steve Laverne was listening will correct me if I'm wrong, with the second win tonight going into the third round is the deepest the Leopards have been. Uh, I know it's the, deep, the deepest the Leopards have been in the playoffs since they won it in 96 and 93. I'm sorry, uh, 96. Anyway, uh, so the Leopards are going deep, keep going deeper and deeper in into the playoffs. Third down, about five for Malvern as Holman takes a snap, gives Brown again. This time Brown's hit at the line of scrimmage, may lose a yard or two. The Malvern punt team comes on with three minutes to go in the football game. It was 93, the Leopards won the state. So, I can tell you, it's been a while since we've had a home game 
the third round. That's true. I, I, yeah, because the year we, I, well, I don't even remember the last time we had a third, third home game in the third round because uh, the year we won state, I think the third round we went to Dumas down there and, and played Dumas after Thanksgiving. On the, on, the night. on the punt from Malvin, inside two and a half minutes to go. Good snap, gets the kick away. Nice spiraling, somewhat spiraling Double kick. Double. And somehow the return man comes up with it as the tackle's being made. <laughs> I don't have to tell you who's down there. Guess, number 34. The free, you know, he takes so many hits at running back, I think he just likes to dish them out. I think he does. On I tell you what I say, I'm looking at him now. The kid just wants to be on the football field. He wants to do whatever he can to make his field, his team better. And uh, if it's special teams or if it's defense, uh, Jaquil will do it. And uh, put the great one for ISO on tonight. Yeah, up the middle, four Perry Grove. Big run for the Tigers. That time, Nick Sugg, a 5'8". Sophomore on the run, gets into Malvern territory, down to the 44-yard line. Let me run some, run some more new players, and Matt Keeter, number 54, 44, I'm sorry, a sophomore uh, linebacker comes in. Jake Golden's out there on defense now. Yeah, this time off to the left side. Nice run for Perry Grove, down to the 35-yard line. And time... I think that was one, and I'm not sure I have a one. I don't have a one either, so maybe seven. Seven, seven would be uh, John Halbert, a 145-pound junior. Or it could be Nick Sugg again. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it could be. <laughs> a minute to go in this one, a second down in the yard for Perry Grove. Pitch, far side. First down for the Tigers. They get yeah, the ball to 30. Ball calls on the ground. Oh, Leopard's diving in. If, if, if they don't call it down, it's Leopard ball. Look to me like, up. Oh, yeah, yeah Leopard ball. Malvin ball, 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 ball. And if you hadn't left this one up already, you can now. 51 seconds to go in the ball game. Leopard's lead 42-14. Uh, unless a, a Leopard breaks loose on a run here, you can... Just about assume that's going to be the final score tonight. I Once again, join us next Friday night right here live, Claude Mann Stadium, 7.30, and we'll uh, play either DeQueen or Nashville. The team both of us have seen, the team, we know the teams, and uh, the other side of that is a mic they know us too. And, uh, you're always a little apprehensive when you go back in to play a team a second time that you've beaten. Yeah, it's tough to do it twice to a good team. Holman had taken a knee on the previous play. The Leopards will not have to take another snap. And the Leopards advance. 42-14, again, your, your final score here from Conman Stadium. <laughs>